times, I must admit, the films will come from other people, other things, other places. But this, I transferred from my actual 16 millimeter film print. The print was made from the original camera negative that was shot when, in 1936. Now, I want to say one very important thing to all of you, men and women. Sex! Sex! Why am I saying sex? And Mr. Schwartz is back there, he's getting all excited already. But sex is what made May West start getting famous. Yeah. Now, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about the physicalities of sex. I'm talking about she had the brains to do something no one else was doing. And that was on the Broadway stage to do a show called S-E-X. Oh. And that alone brought in the people. It also brought in the publicity, which brought in the cops, and had the theater raided. When she got out of prison, she also made shows with transsexuals, homosexuals, all about that aspect of New York life that no one else was doing at that time because of the intensity of the morals at that time. But due to the fact of doing something no one else was doing and something that was rather provocative, sex, <laughs> that's what made her. And that's what made Paramount Pictures take her and bring her to California because the newest thing, talkies. And she was a talking star. And remember, all those stars that were in the silent days that Paramount had, Rudolph Valentino, I mean, uh, Clara Bow, all those stars, they all were great in silence because you could use your imagination of what they were like. But when they were on screen in a talkie, their voices did not match the image that they were propelling in their silent film career. So Paramount went to the New York stages and the New York entertainers and got them because they relied on the live entertainment and utilization of jokes, accents, comedy verbiage. You know, and that's what talkies were all about, or they wouldn't have been called talkies. So Mae West was perfect for all of that. Now, later on, when Mae West's career was starting to fail, she had a tremendous success by having, having a person be with her, a male. But the two of them fought like cats and dogs because Male and female, they really were the same. Now that film I'm talking about was My Little Chickadee. Oh, uh, yes. And the star was W.C. Fields. Now W.C. Fields and Mae West, remember, they all came from theater. They knew instinctively what was going to make an audience, a live audience laugh. So they're able to transfer that onto film in front of a camera. Because, you know, when you're doing theater, You've got tons of people looking at you, and you knew exactly, or the, you knew how to make those human people react because you were feeling their vibes as you were giving them out. Now, you had to translate that to film. Now, film, you had maybe 10 people on the crew filming you. I mean, and you had to be, they had to be dead silent. You really couldn't get any feedback, but these people knew. I mean, this go that what I'm telling you goes back to Charlie Chaplin. I mean, Charlie Chaplin was in theater, in London theater, before he did film. And that's another reason why he was so natural on screen, such as Buster Keaton and a lot of them. But now Mae West came from the gritty world of depression, in New York City, and she was able to transfer that. Now, this film is a postcode, like I was saying before. Prior to that, you really could do pretty much anything and would also enhance 
the ticket gross that the theaters would get for people coming in to see. Because again, what are you all coming for? Which you really couldn't see anywhere else at that time in entertainment. It was immorality and sex. <laughs> so this is the story and this film really works on the fact that she was known for her sexuality. She really didn't do anything sexual. She just controlled the entire creative production of this film, as she did all her others, because she knew best how to sell herself. And the studios knew this. That's the same thing with W.C. Fields. They both came from the W.C. Fields, if you didn't know it, he did Broadway with Flo and starred in Flo Ziegfeld shows. So they all knew instinctively what they were all about. As per my words, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the film. This is a Paramount. Paramount is my most favorite studio because of that sophistication, the class, and that grit of reality <clears throat> in people. Yes, How Joe. is she considered by her peers as an actress? Good, uh, fair, or? I don't think that she really was considered an actress. I think she was considered a star, a, star. a superstar. Um, she really lost herself as a human being. She lost herself in her character. And in her, one of her last films, Greg, do you know the title? Well, I forgot the title. I Rock and Rich. Uh, well, that's one of the last ones. But there was another one. And she is an old woman, but she is still utilizing that sexuality that was like. This is why I always say you have to look at the film in the mindset of when it was made. I personally don't see what was so sexually intriguing about Mae West. But back then, guys were salivating. Women wanted to emulate her. So this is the great thing about film. Film is a time capsule, it's a time machine that we are blessed by God to have because we can actually look back in time and see authentically what was going on at the time. On a beautiful print. Ah, you thank you. Before, that print is <coughs> outstanding. It cost me 400 bucks back in 1975. <laughs> but thank you, Lee. No, it really is. I mean, it's Thanks. crystal clear. And, you know, we all know that uh, some films might have been retouched or whatever, but that, if you've had it all these years, yeah. beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Well, there was a company when, all right, uh, why a lot of these films exist in such pristine forms is because television used to broadcast actual film prints. Then they got rid of all the film prints because it really was taking up too much room and too much weight. And they transferred, they treated that in for everything on video. But that's why these films exist. And there was a company that actually rented out when, before we had VHS, before we had DVD to show film. I mean, when I, when I was in Jamaica, when I was in Jamaica high school for Halloween, this guy would loan the, the school 16 millimeter prints of Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. I mean, there was no video. This is from my DVD right now because I changed it because no place has movie projectors anymore. Uh, thank you so much for coming. And if you ever want to know more history about this.